Karen wants to know, what is your experience with helping to cure or alleviate lung cancer? Can the Live Foods program add months or years to a patient's life expectancy? Well, number one, we have seen uh, numbers of people over the decades heal themselves of lung cancer. Now, the word that you used, uh, Cindy, let's explore that a little bit. Uh, a marketing term that has been presented to the public by the mainstream medical profession, cure, does not really exist. And I'm not saying this for any legalistic reason or hedging the question. I just don't believe in cures. Cures sort of remedy something to a point where people no longer have to be responsible. How this program has worked for hundreds of thousands of people over the last half century is they've taken responsibility They've done all the things we've suggested with the head, with the food, with the supplementation, with the exercise, and many times with the therapies, and they've boosted their what system? Their immune system. It is your immune system that has protected you from being sick in the past, and it is your immune system that you've permitted to become weak because you did not apply the above-mentioned items, and now the disease has made seed in you. If your immune system remains weak, you will remain sick, and you will eventually die from most diseases. Even sm slight diseases, a common cold can kill you if you don't have a strong enough immune system, if it doesn't respond and fight and battle and beat up the bad guy and get rid of him. So what one does is, is when they do recover from something like a lung cancer, they have to be vigilant. It's not as if you get well and then go back to smoking cigarettes or living in a major city or being under stress or eating hamburgers. What you do is you put the cancer back into the closet. You beat the heck out of it. You knock it up so it says, hey, I'm going to run away. I'm going to go hide in the closet again. And why I say the closet and it doesn't evaporate and disappear is we now have clear data, not only Hippocrates, the scientific community in oncology, that the healthiest person, me, for instance, I have a minimum of 5,000 cancer cells in my body. Now listen closely to these statistics. That doesn't mean I'll ever get cancer, which I will not, by the way. But what it means is if Brian all at once gets dumb and starts smoking cigarettes like I used to do 40 years ago and maybe takes up smoking marijuana and says, I'm going to move to Mexico City or, or Denver, Colorado or Los Angeles or Paris and huff up some pollution, and I'm going to start eating horrific things that weaken my immune system. And by the way, I no longer want to go to the gym or exercise anymore. I'd rather watch television and eat potato chips. Well, all at once, that 5,000 cells become 20,000 and 50,000 and 100,000, 200,000. Now listen closely. Before the greatest diagnostic technology in medical science can even detect cancer, you have to have 5 billion cells. B, Whoa. 5 billion cells. That means a PET scan sees the most insignificant little tiny thing, it's 5 billion cells. So most people by the time they have been diagnosed with cancer have billions and billions of cells, if not trillions of cells. Now, this is all in, in perspective when you know that the human body has 95 trillion cells in it, and 85 trillion are in the human brain, from the neck down, 10 trillion cells. And before we can even see cancer, 5 billion cells, and the healthiest person in the world, 5,000 cells. Now, what you may do is have, let's take a, uh, one for a guess. You have uh, 100 billion cells. You have some kind of a small tumor in your body. And what we do, and this is in the lung in this particular case, is we get the immune system, the soldiers, you know, the T cell, which is a general, and the H cell, which is a lieutenant, and the Marines, which is a leukocyte, and the eosinophils, and the basophils, and the neutrocytes, and the grandocytes. And this army is like the Israeli army. Not like the Americans, like the Israeli army. And they go in and beat the hell. They beat, 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 beat back that cancer. Remember, it's cells. It's mutated cells, and they're spinning in the opposite direction of healthy cells. And they beat it up. Now it becomes small and incidental, and it says, oh, my God, I'm not going to fight the Israeli army anymore. And I'm just not going to fight the other. I'm going to run back in the closet. Now, does that mean it's going to stay in the closet? Yes, it is, if you do what? If you self-respect, if you remain loyal to all the things that make you a healthy person, you will keep it in the closet. But what happens if you hit your head and get dumb? Or you don't keep the guards, the immune system guards at the door? Well, it can come back again. And that's why, by the way, statistically in mainstream allopathic medicine, they tell us, they tell us that 93% of the people that were treated for cancer, cancer eventually will come back, and the majority of them will die from cancer. Now, 
What kind of statistic is that to tell people if you're trying to sell them on your treatment? <laughs> but that's a fact. That's a fact. Why? Because they never get to the core of the problem. They not only don't support the immune system uh, with general type of, of allopathic treatments today in this country, but they also devastate the very immune system that can, that can potentially eliminate the disease permanently. So, I mean, so the, her question where can it add months or years to the patient's life, you said there are people that have, for all, you know, they've, they've healed themselves. I mean, they might still have, you know, a few thousand running around, but they're not sick. They're Absolutely. Well, there were functional can, people who are running around, uh, just like my friend there I talked about earlier. Thirty-two years ago, she was dying uh, in two, three months, and, and here she is running around in her early 80s and perfectly healthy and uh, was skiing recently and, you know, this wow. is what happens to people. So, but we can't be mm-hmm. we can't be callous and we can't be cocky. We've got to be humble. We've got to realize that it's a gift to be able to do what it takes to get healthy, and it's a gift to remain healthy by doing those things. 